the third part of natural hazard which includes volcano how they happens landslide flood and drought so first we will be starting with volcano specifically so as you can see in the picture that we have shown a diagrammatic view of that how the volcano erupts so you can see we have shown the upper mantle crust lower mantle core and you can see the magma chamber have been shown that that how magma comes out in the form of lava from the volcano which can be seen here picturally and like these are some of the hot spot of earth in the molten asthenospheres so the molten material which comes out from the earthquake inside the volcano it is referred to as magma so magma coming out from the interior of the earth through a pipe or vent and accumulating around the pipe in the form of mound which is called as volcano so this is the basic definition of the volcano and during this process the molded magma which comes out in the form of lava in from the earth interior on the surface of the earth in the form of lava forms its area around the convergent plate boundaries or divergent plate boundaries so most of the time it is the either a convergent plate boundary or a divergent plate boundary where 95 percent of the times this happen so there are some peculiar causes of volcanoes the why why the volcanoes happens why what is the reason of happening of the volcano so one reason could be that the interior of the earth have lots of lots of radioactive elements like uranium for example thorium potassium these radioactive elements leads to disintegration which produce a lot of heat and energy which melts down the rock into the magma and this magma try to escapes into the earth surface by means of weak zone of the earth such as plate margins wherever the two plates are having some of the space fault lines and folding and joints so this way this magma will come out in the form of lava and this could be one of the process of volcanic eruption or cause of volcanic eruption the second could be plate tectonics so due to the tectonic activity of the plates of the earth it could happen so these kind of volcanic eruptions are very common in the case of both divergent and convergent plate boundaries and these plate boundary basically are the weaker zones where the magma can find a space to erupt out so magma can find out a space in these plate boundary region wherever they converge or diverge and the magma comes out in the form of lava and hence the volcano erupts for example this is a very important like point ring of fire so ring of fire is the hot spot area where maximum of the earthquake occurs in the pacific ocean this question have been asked repeatedly the another example is the great rift valley of africa now let's put up some light on the types of volcano so we will be dealing the types of volcano that what are the volcanoes so volcanoes on the basis of frequency of eruption that how fast or how slow they erupt right or become active there could be three type of volcanoes one is active volcanoes for example the barren island in andaman nicobar which are like erupts specifically any time then we have dormant volcano which are like they are peaceful they are not erupting anymore for example narkondam in andaman nicobar island and third one is extinct which are no more existing now let's deal about some of the characteristics of the different types of volcanoes so we have made a table in order to understand it very well in the first column we have mentioned the type of volcano and in the second column we have mentioned the forms of volcano the third column the types of magma that what is the nature of the magma then fourth column the mode of eruption that how it erupt and in the fifth column we have taken the specific example so let's take first type of volcano which is basalt plateau so in the case of basalt plateau the form of volcano is flat or gentle slope and the type of magma is basaltic basically in nature right basaltic in nature so this one is 
basaltic in nature right and then mode of eruption is gentle eruption it erupts slowly for example the Deccan plateau and the Columbia river plateau these are the two examples of the basalt plateau type of volcano and second type of volcano is the shield volcano so it is generally slightly sloped the slope is around 6 to 12 degree and then the type of magma is also basaltic in this that will be basalt in nature which will be thought in the in rocks and the type of eruption is gentle here for example the Hawaii Iceland in Mauna Loa so you might be remembering this from the Mauna Loa observatory where first the CO2 concentration was measured in 1952 then third type of volcano is cinder cone so cinder cone of type of volcano which have moderate slope and the magma type or the lava which boots out would be basaltic or andesite when we talk about the type of rock and the mode of eruption is slightly to moderate violent it could be slightly moderate or violent in between an example is little lake volcano in california usa and pericutive iceland of mexico these are the two examples of cinder cone volcano the fourth one is the composite cone volcano so the slope in this case is for the form of volcano is highly slope means it will be highly angled and there are various types of magma in this and the mode of eruption is always explosive or violent means this is the more violent or explosive kind of volcano right and the example about this volcano is mount Vesuvius on mount fuji these are the two examples mount Vesuvius or mount fuji for composite cone type of volcano so these were types of volcano so more important information about them is that composite volcanoes are fissure volcano for example Deccan plateau which we have given initially having a black soil which is good for cotton agriculture this question has been asked many times then the salt plateau has more iron forms due to the fissure eruption so that has to be remembered about the basalt plateau type of volcano now let's talk about globally that how they are distributed across the globe means wherever the more volcano wherever the sorry more volcanoes and wherever is the less so ring of fire as i have mentioned the pacific ocean have 66 percent of the volcano eruption which is the maximum followed by mediterranean sea rift valley having some 13 percent then isolated iceland like hawaii having some 21 percent of the volcanic eruption contribution across the globe now we'll be talking about some of the mitigation measures that how the volcano can be mitigated right how the volcano can be mitigated we will be studying about the volcano that how they can be mitigated so one and the foremost and the four requisite thing is we can plan early warning systems which alarm the people that there is a volcano eruption happening well before the volcano erupt then we can also measure some of the noble gases like neon and argon which is presumably be increased just before the eruption of volcano and choking a water pipeline this could be one of the indication for volcano so we can mitigate it and then we can use the remote sensing or gps right this can be also used for mitigation of the volcanoes then we can also divide the zones like we can did micro zonation that these are the volcano affected area these are not these are the hot spot these are not so such kind of zonation can be done there then strictly implementing the nidm norms national institute for disaster management so the norms are there which has to be implemented in order to prevent the major mishappening when it comes to volcano and then we cannot <coughs> rule out the role of non-governmental organization NGOs and self-help group which are sometimes more helpful in preventing such kind of tragedy so now we will be studying the next 